we're going to start with a really good story. So I had a freshman to show up in my office, hair all over his head, but he had a tie on. And I was trying to figure out what was going on with him. And this was at Park Community College. I learned from talking to him, he was very engaging. I learned from talking to him that we had something in common. We were both from Chicago, and we were now living in the Bronx. But I knew that there was something underneath and wanted to really find out more. So what I found out from him was he had moved to New Jersey, had been selling drugs, and his mother made him come to school. Wasn't his first choice, but he ended up at my doorstep. And it was when I took the guys to Buffalo Wild Wings that winter, I got a chance to meet his mother. And his mother said, thank you for changing his life. I didn't know what that meant, but I will find out by the end of this talk. <laughs> so when I started preparing for this talk, I thought it was really important to think about what a leader is. And I wanted to utilize something I think we all should know, or at least for me, I learned at a very early age, and I knew I was going to attack this, and I needed to attack it, with the five W's and the one H. Everybody knows the five W's and one H, right? Yeah. So say them along with me. Who, what, when, where, how, why, right? So I think we all pretty much know those. According to Oxford Language Dictionary, leader is defined as a person who leads or commands a group, organization, or country. So, pretty good definition, right? All right, well, what about this? I felt like there was something missing from that definition. What about someone who guides and shapes productive teams? In corporate America, I've had to create teams. Working with faculty and working with programs, I've had to create those. So we have to think a little bit more about that. And then we have to also think about creating positive change for future generations. It's not just what we exist in today. What about our future? I can give you some names of, of some leaders that I think we would all know, like Barack Obama, or Gandhi, or today we might even say Bill Gates, right? We think of him as a good leader. But what about our everyday leaders? What about our teachers? You know, according to the National Center for Educational Studies, there are 1.5 million college professors and universities in the United States, right? So they educate 19.2 college students across the United States. So we have an opportunity to create 19.2 future leaders. The question start off with, are we preparing them? Are we preparing future leaders? Absolutely we're preparing them. Now, every future leader may not go back or may not go in the same direction, but we are creating future leaders. During my time as a leader in the classroom, I have been called many things. Hopefully most of them are good. But, you know, I've been called professor, I've been called, um, I've been called big bro, I've been called doctor. But the one thing that simply makes me happy being in front of those students is just not. I came from a family of educators, and Knox is good enough for me. So what do we do as leaders that are preparing future leaders? We are nurturing, we're guiding, we're supporting. We are acting as surrogate parents. You know how many, how many children I have now after teaching almost 20 years? You know, I have godchildren that have come out of being teachers. I have, or being a teacher. I have, you know, those who have gone on to become police officers and business owners. And so I've been part of that, which is really important to me. 
But we also have to think about what our future leaders are facing today. You know, some of these things have been faced for years but have just recently come to light. Like such things as domestic violence. You know how many students I have encountered over my 17 years? You know, I've had students who have come to class, especially in the South Bronx, with black eyes, or one time I had a, a student whose husband got out of jail looking for her on the campus. Students are facing these issues and we close our eyes to it. They are also facing food insecurities. 20 to 50% of all college students are facing some sort of food insecurity. They can't eat at night. Many of them are showing up unprepared for college level work. 60% of the students who enter in across the nation, of all students entering into college, are not prepared. They have to take at least one remedial course, prolonging their time. And mental health challenges. We've just gone through COVID, but even before COVID, we had students who were undiagnosed sitting in our classrooms that have mental challenges. 73% of college students. And these are our future leaders. So we have to be prepared for them. So what is it that we're going to do? What is it that will future leaders need to lead them to success? They have to be innovative. Look at COVID. What did we have to do? The world changed. They have to be prepared for that. And actually, our future leaders will probably be more prepared for what we experience. We were running around, how do we get all of our students to be in, in, a, in, a, in an online environment as opposed to face-to-face? -face? But they will be prepared because they're ready with technology. But these are the things of innovation and appreciation for diversity, equity, equality, and inclusion. So often, I don't hear the, the equality in DEI work. They have to be prepared. Have you looked around? Students today are, are, are very diverse. We can't just put everything into a box. You know, there are different lifestyles. There, there are different people of, of veterans who are returning to school. We all are in diverse populations, and those future leaders have to be open and ready to work with all of those diversities. And they also have to be change agents. We have to be ready for change. You know, I walked into an, an institution where I had people who worked for me, two people who had over, just retired, over 80 years of service at one institution. So introducing change, we have to have individuals who are open to this change. Not only do they have to be open, they have to be able to set the change. So, when do we start this for our future leaders? In my world of education, I always say from being a toddler all the way to the time that I see them showing up in college. Not only at that point, hopefully I'm preparing them to leave and to go away and, and to be part of my children that I get to add on to. But again, we have to think about, you know, what do they need at birth? What do they need when they're entering into school? What do we need, what do they need when they're entering into high school? Those are all changes. And they are all times when we have to think about how we are developing future leaders. But what do we do in between that time? We have to mentor. We have to coach. And one of the things I think that is left out many times, we have to be a sponsor. If we don't open up opportunities for future leaders, the doors will close in their face. Sometimes we have to make that extra opportunity available for them. So there's a difference between just a mentor, but also making sure they're in the right spaces and that someone is sponsoring them. And making sure that we lead by example. We have to make sure that we are the ones that they look up to, that they are ready, and that they can always call upon. You know, I get students who will call me, and I always tell my students, look, I give them my Google phone number, but do not call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, because I'm asleep. 
And especially on a Friday because your paper is due on Saturday, don't call me. Because I have to be there ready for you Saturday morning to tell you you didn't turn your paper in on time. <laughs> so, where do we create this space for them? Well, in my teaching and over my years of experience, anywhere, anywhere that our future leaders are, we need to make sure that those spaces are created for them. Because what I learned from running the Black Male Initiative at Bronx Community College is that just creating space for those students made a major difference for them. Some of the conversations that they had, they were their own peers to each other. And what I found was, when you think about leadership, they started holding each other accountable. All I had to do was be there. But they started to do that work. But making sure that wherever we are, we are leading by example and that it is everywhere. You know, I think about when we ride the train for seven years, I took a train ride from Mount Eden to Burrow Hall, which if you don't know the South Bronx to downtown Brooklyn, that's about a 45 to 50 minute ride every day. So you come through the South Bronx into Harlem, then you come on up to 59th Street, and you are going on down to Wall Street, and then you cross over, you, you, you pick up the Staten Island, Staten Islanders that are getting off the ferry, and you go on into Brooklyn, but you see change all throughout that time. And you may see good change, you may see bad change. And I can think of having to be that example on the train for young women who were not speaking in, that, not in, a, in a very nice way, but if we don't prepare them or lead by example, when is it gonna happen? So why do we need to do this? Well, when you think about things such as global warming, when we think about the recent changes with uh, the, the Voting Rights Act, when we think about HIV AIDS, when we think about Social Security, the future of it, why don't we want, we have to have future leaders at the table, and I, I know for myself, I want those that are prepared to walk in a shoe or walk in the right direction that are making the right decisions for me. I'm not sure about you, but I'm hoping the future leaders are prepared for these issues and more because we seem to get these issues that are arising every single day in our society. So what are we going to do about that, right? So that's the why we need to do this. So how are we going to do this? Well, I subscribe to the African proverb: it takes a village to raise a child. We have to use that same proverb when we're thinking about future leaders. What is it going to take? It's going to take all of us. It's going to take us as a village to be able to prepare the next future leaders. Because if we don't, oh, someone else will prepare them. And me teaching criminal justice, I don't want to see another who shows up in the criminal justice system. We already have mass incarceration. We don't need, we don't need them going in that direction. We need them to be future leaders that are making decisions for all of us. So what, will, do, what do we have to instill in them? We have to instill empathy. We have to instill exposure. Because if we don't expose our future leaders, you know, you know how many students I have come across in the South Bronx who've never been out in the South Bronx? Asking them when they've ever been to Staten Island, what do you mean Staten Island? Where is that? Then you have to pull it out on the map and say, this is part of, part of New York City. Many of my students have never been to Staten Island. They have never thought about taking a ferry ride. I'll be honest, I never took a ferry ride until I came to Staten Island. And I had lived in New York City for over 10 years. So again, we have to make sure they're exposed and know that. And I go back to what I said before, mentorship, sponsorship, and time. So, I want to give you an update. Remember I said everybody loves a good story? Well, that same young man who showed up with hair all over his head and had a good tie on, well, he also became Student Government Association President at Ross Community College. He graduated and went to Peru, majored in economics, and he became the uh, Black Student Union President. He also left there and he today works at a top 10 accounting firm. 
And you know, I think of it as saying, I think I have a little something to do with it. I'm pretty sure, and I know he's going to be a future leader because it makes me proud every day, even when he calls me. Still a pain in my side, you know, but I enjoy seeing that I've transitioned him from where he was to a future leader. And I'll leave you with one last statement. There's no student who does not want to succeed. All students want to lead. Thank you all for your time. It's been a pleasure.